Those of you who have looked into overclocking your PC have probably heard someone say you need to let thermal paste break in before you try to hit maximum clock speeds. Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and welcome to the second episode of Quick Questions. Today we're going to test out whether thermal paste, or TIM, actually needs to be broken in. The test system today is my old i5-750 desktop built way back around 2010. The testing process was pretty straightforward. Clean up the old paste, put on the new paste, and record the temperatures every few hours for the first 24 hours, then again a couple days later. First up was cleaning the old thermal paste off. All you need is some rubbing alcohol, paper towels, and cotton swabs. After getting most of it off the CPU with a paper towel, I dipped a cotton swab in the rubbing alcohol and cleaned it up completely. I used the same process for cleaning the heatsink. Get the bulk of it off with a paper towel, then dip a cotton swab in isopropyl alcohol and clean it up to a shiny finish. Once the old Arctic Silver 5 was cleaned up, I added a small blob of Deep Cool Z5 thermal paste to the center of the processor. I repositioned the heatsink, rotated it a bit to spread out the paste, then bolted it down. Once that was all done, it was time to start testing. There were three temperatures I was interested in collecting over the supposed break-in period. Idle temperatures, temps while gaming, and finally temperatures during stress testing. To get idle temperatures, I just left the computer sitting on the desktop. After around 10 minutes, which gave it enough time to stabilize, I recorded the CPU temperature. For gaming, I used CSGO and played for 10 minutes online, then recorded the processor temperature. For stress testing, I ran Prime95 with small FFTs for maximum heat and recorded the temperature after 10 minutes. The first round of tests was performed immediately after applying the new thermal paste. Idle CPU temperatures hovered around 30 degrees Celsius. While gaming, which admittedly isn't a great metric for processor temps since the workload fluctuates so much, the i5-750 mostly stayed around 54 degrees Celsius. During stress testing with Prime95, the processor peaked at 61 degrees. I repeated these tests after 3 hours, 6 hours, 9, 12, and finally 24 hours after applying the new thermal paste. 24 hours is the longest and most often recommended break-in period I've seen online, but just to be thorough, I repeated the three tests again after 5 days. If thermal paste does have a break-in period, it'll almost certainly be inside that window. Here's the graph of those temperatures. All testing was performed in a room at near constant 24 degrees Celsius, and note that the x-axis isn't scaled in order to keep the individual points readable. I guess the sad thing about this is there isn't much mystery here. The temperatures really just didn't change more than a degree or two. Even after 5 days, temperatures were only 1 degree lower than with brand new thermal paste. I'd consider that well inside a margin of error. To put that in perspective, a 1 degree Celsius change is equal to 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a very, very tiny difference. On top of that, the temperature sensors inside a computer round to the nearest whole degree. It could be that idle temperatures went from 29.5 degrees Celsius, rounded up to 30, to 29.49, rounding down to 29. Based on this test, I'd say if you're using any typical off-the-shelf thermal paste, you won't experience any kind of break-in period. It is definitely possible that the thermal paste performance actually did change between the first round of tests and the repetition five days later, but the difference was, at most, only one degree Celsius. So to be entirely fair when answering the question, does thermal paste have a break-in period, I'll say it might but it won't make a practical difference. The story may be different if you're using liquid metal or thermal adhesives, but those products are only used in a tiny fraction of all the PC builds out there. Maybe at some point in the future, if there's enough interest, I'll cover those as well. This is my second thermal paste themed quick question. The first episode in this series covered whether thermal paste actually wears out over time. If you want to check out that video, it's linked in the description and in the card in the top right. If you want to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up, hit subscribe, then click the bell icon to enable notifications. Links to the thermal paste I used and the quick questions playlist are in the description below. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and if you have any quick questions you want answered, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video.